Hello, good morning, good afternoon. Welcome to Purposely Designed. Prayerfully, all is well with you. Um, today, I just wanted to just basically talk about something that was on my heart uh, the other day. It was I was just thinking about faith, you know, faith, and thinking about how a lot of times we really don't. When God tells us, you know, he's going to do something, how we tend to give up, how we really don't realize the type of God that we serve. Like, do you really know him? And and, and I think that's the biggest thing is, do you, do we really know God? Do we know him, you know, as Abba Father? Do we know him? Do we have a real serious, sincere relationship with him, do we know him as um, Alpha Omega? You know, do we know him as the beginning, the end? Do we know him as the Creator? Do we know him as Elohim? Do we know him as El Shaddai? Who, like, um, like, how, how do you know him? You know, do you have a personal relationship with God? So anyways, as I was just thinking about, you know, I don't know, it's just like an encouraging word in my spirit to kind of like reassure you that God is able to do everything. He's able to do anything but fail. That's the only thing he can't do. He's he's able. He's the, the The only thing that enables him is is at times is us because we don't trust him because we choose to do it our own way we because we tend to a lot of times get in the way you know we choose not to go the way that he would have us to go we choose not to do things according to his will and his purpose for our lives and a lot of times it's because it seems hard it may seem hard but you got to know who's in control and at times you can try to take control he'll let you have the will if this is what you choose to do but when you're when it's all said and done you know at the end of the day you're going to have to give up the will you you're going to have to surrender because you're going to recognize and realize that God is the one who's in control he he truly is in control you guys and so anyways this is this is just um a little bit of pretty much where my mindset was where my heart was what God was dealing with me on this subject and so we're going to get on into the message first we're going to begin with prayer Lord God we we just give you honor we give you praise and we give you glory we thank you Lord God that you're able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ask or think according to the power that worketh in us Lord God we thank you that it's your power that worketh in us is not us, is not anything that that has anything to do with us, but it's all about you, Father. And we just give you honor, we give you praise, and we give you glory. We just ask, Lord God, that you will help and increase our faith in you, not in ourselves, not in what we can do, but Father, in you, Lord God, and what you're able to do. And Father, we just give you praise, honor, and glory because we know that you're able to do all things but fail. And so, Lord, help us to trust you. Help us to trust you in this world and the things and how things look like, Lord God. Help us to trust you regardless of how it seems, regardless as to how things may look like, Lord God. Um, No matter what people say, no matter what people are doing, Lord God, no no matter about anything else, Lord God, help us. Give us a focus focus Lord God help us to focus in on you and know that you are our creator Lord God that you are the alpha you are the mega you are all things Lord God everything is it all it all everything comes down to you it all comes down to you and so father just help us Lord God to trust you to trust your will to trust your way 
in our lives in the mighty name of Jesus. And God, we give you praise and glory and honor in Jesus name. Amen and amen. So we're going to start it off with Philippians 4 and 19. It says, but my God, and this is what I really want you to get into your spirit. Know that your God, my God, shall supply all your need. He didn't say needs. He said need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. There is no doubt in this. There's no doubt. There's nothing in here that says to doubt God. Nothing in here um, even advertise or uh, magnifies doubt at all to me. It says it's, it's like there's no there's no question. No doubt. Um, but a statement and the statement is, but just in case you didn't know, my God, hold on, but I know what you said, but my God, mm, my God, I don't know about your God, but my God, but I know without a doubt that my God, he Shall supply. Not he might. Not maybe. Not if he feels like it. Not if you're good good enough. Not if you're good at all. Not because of anything you've done or even said. But my God. He shall supply. Not some. Not a little. Not a few. Here or there, but the word clearly states all your need according to not anything that I've done, not according to what I even think um, I have, not according to anything I even qualify for, but it's according to his riches in glory. By by not me, by not my pastor, by no evangelist, by no missionary, by no teacher, by no prophet or prophetess, but by Christ Jesus. You got to know, because a lot of times that's the problem is who is your God? You know, who are you worshiping? You know, truly, who are you? Whose word? Like, I just believe that in Matthews 4 and 4, it says, But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded. Out of the mouth of God. I believe that word with my whole heart. I believe, first of all, you got to know that God speaks. You got to know that He speaks to you. You got to know that um, even in maybe things, you know, I don't know. It's, it's like, if you're if you open up your mind, open up your heart, you'll be able to receive way more than what you think that you can even obtain. If you make yourself aware and know when this is God. You know what I'm saying? You got to know when this this is a God thing when you're when you can you're connected with a certain someone. Oh man, this this is a God thing. You know what I'm saying? Or maybe you just click on to the radio and someone is speaking something and it's regarding your situation. Oh, man, God had met me right here. You know, this is a God thing. (laughs) You know, you got to recognize when he's speaking to you. 
even on the radio, when he's speaking to you, even when you, you're just flipping through the channels on your television and all of a sudden a word just hits you or a situation just hits you or, you know what I'm saying? It's just, you got to know. You may be on Facebook and then all of a sudden you click, click on and, and someone starts is prophesying and, and it's live and there's a word that's being spoken and it's regarding something that you're going through. God is speaking to you. He's speaking to you and you have to know what that word says when it says by every word word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. It's more than just bread. And the bread is the word. It's more than just the word. But it's also by the spoken word. It's by what he says. What is he telling you? And see, that's the problem. A lot of, t- a lot of times we doubt God. We doubt that he even speaks. We doubt him. But, uh, and a lot of times we doubt because we don't speak to him. And then when we do speak to him, we speak to him um, in such a way that we don't even understand. We just pray in a prayer that, you know, was spoken because somebody else spoke it or something that we don't read out of a book. Instead of making it sincere and literally speaking to him, just as I'm speaking to you today. That's what he wants. That's what he desires. An intimate, a real relationship. A relationship that a father has with the son. That's how you ought to be speaking with the father. Because he is the father. He is our father, Abba Father. If you know him as such, you know, how do you know him? Do you know him? You know, and... A lot of times people question other people's relationship because they don't have one or because God ain't deal with them like that. It's all about your relationship. That's what matters. You know, it matters. That's what matters the most is your relationship with Elohim, with Abba Father, with El Shaddai, whoever you want to call him, whatever, whatever that. Whatever your relationship is with him. Possibly even however he's dealing with you right now. You know what I'm saying? Um, he will give you the word. He will give you the name. He'll, I'm just saying. I'm, I'm, I'm telling you personally what I've experienced in my own life. And so for you, I would say um, make it personal. You know, we go all out our way. To be personable when it comes down to people. But how personable are you with God? How personable are you with him? Do you really talk to him about everything? Like, do you really let him in? And and some people would say, God ain't concerned with that. He's concerned with everything. There's no limits. And I, I don't know if it's like. A lot of times we limit him. But I'm, I'm going to tell you, there's no limits with God. There's no limits. Eat. Let's go. Let's go here real quick. And this, this, these are outside of what I, of the scriptures that God have given me. But I'm, hold on, I'm going to go right here real quick too. Okay, let's, let's go over here to Matthews chapter 7 and 11. And, you know, this helped me, you know, when I was going through something, I was, you know, deciding on getting a divorce or not. You know, I knew what I was going through and I was really seeking. At first, I I sought man. Um, Be honest with you, I sought pastor. I sought the first lady. But then I went and I started seeking God. About this whole situation. Because he knows more than anybody. He knows what's going on in your household. He knows everything that's going on with you. Personally. So. Just know that. Just know how much he loves us. And so I had thought about this thing. Matthew 7 11. It says. If ye then being evil. Know how to give 
good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your Father, which is in heaven, give good things to them that ask? And so, when I thought about that, let's see, let's go on up a little bit. It says, um, let's go to, let's go up to Matthew 7 and 7. Ask and it shall be given you. Seek and ye shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. For everyone that asketh receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth. And to him that knocketh, it shall be open. Oh, Lord, have mercy. The more you bang on that door, the more you start to seek and really, really get intimate with God. He said, I'm going to open the door for you. Or what man is there of you whom, whom if his, his son asks bread, will he give him a stone? Hold on. This, now you're talking a relationship here. You talk in relationship right here. Or if he sh- he asks a fish, will he give him a serpent? Of course not. Of course you wouldn't. Even a mother wouldn't do this. It says, if ye then being evil know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your father, which is in heaven, Give good things to them that ask. And that right there, I thought about my father. I thought about how my father would feel to know what I was going through. And would he allow me to stay there? Would he just let me stay? Would he just let me set in this relationship, in this covenant? Or would he release me of it? Because... He sees my pain because he knows what I'm going through. Because he knows I'm giving it my all. He knows the situation. What would my father say? How would he feel about it? You know, and a lot of times, instead of going by what he say, she say, we ought to come and consult the father. Because if he loves us even more than our natural father, think about your natural father. And if those of you don't have a natural father, you know, and most of the ones that don't have a natural father have an intimate relationship with someone like a father or with God himself. And so, you know what he'd be okay with. You see what I'm saying? So, once I... Really thought about that thing. Once I really made it personal for me. Because I already had a relationship. Some things I allowed people to teach me. Instead of going to the Father for myself. And that's what you have to learn to do. To go to the Father for yourself. For yourself. Okay, let's go here real quick. <laughs> this is y'all, this is getting outside of but it's it's not, it's correlating with it. I was gonna say this is really getting outside of where I was going, but it's not. It's it's correlating with it. It's just outside of my notes. But we're going to focus because this is the way that God is going. So first John two and twenty seven, it says, But the anointing which ye have received of him abideth in you. And ye need not that any man teach you, but as the same anointing teacheth you of all things, and is true, and is no lie. And even as it hath taught you, ye shall abide in him. Look. That right there just shows you. Look, if you got the Holy Spirit, and you don't have to have anybody to teach you. If you have a relationship 
with the Father personally. And see, this is what we need to learn from Jesus because Jesus had a personal relationship, y'all. He had a personal relationship with the Father. And he ain't need nobody else to teach him but the Holy Spirit. And the same Holy Spirit is here to teach you too. The same Holy Spirit is here to teach me. A lot of times, because we go off of man's doctrine, because we go off of what men say, you know, we get somewhat off course at times. At times. Because we choose to listen to people over God. It may, he, they may say something to you and it may not even set right in your spirit. And instead of you going to the Father and saying, Lord, I heard what they said. But Father, did it come from you? Or did that come out of their flesh? Where is this coming from? Instead, we just take it and we live off of what people say. We live off of that. Instead of going to God personally and saying, Father, how do you feel about it? How do you feel about this situation? What do you think about this? You know, did you send this to me or did I did I get this for myself? You see what I'm saying? Like, where is this coming from? And what did it, did this? Where did this person get this from? Is this something that you said or is this what man said? You know what I'm saying? What what is what do you say? How do you feel about it? You know, instead of us doing that, we we go and say, "Okay." Well, and we apply it. And then we try to figure out why didn't it work? Well, you didn't even seek the father about it. How how do you, do you even <laughs> Who was your relationship with? Who do you, who is your covenant with? Who, who do you trust? Do we, do you trust God or do you trust, you know, who, do you trust man over God? Who do you trust? Who, who, who do you listen to? So anyway, y'all, I don't want to get too caught up in that. I just, I just really, really want you to think about that because I'm going to tell you about my God. Ephesians 3 and 20, it says, Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we can ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. Listen, God has no limits. Recognize that. He has no limits. He created you. He created the things around you. Um, He gave man knowledge to create the things that, like the homes that you're living in today, uh, to obtain electricity, to obtain gasoline, to show how these things can work in your vehicles, how you can heat and cool your household. Look. If he can give you these things, and these things would be considered simple to him, how much more? I serve a limitless God. I serve a limitless God. He's able to do everything and above, plus anything that we can ask, do, and I place in do. Or even think. And a lot of times you'll find yourself walking straight into doors that God has set in front of you. In order to take you exactly to where he wants you to be. You know, you don't even have to think about it. At times he just lines it up just like that. You just walk right into the the faith that you have. Will cause you to walk in doors that no man can even close, that no man could would even think that you'd be able to walk into. 
That's how great God is. That's how awesome he is. God is awesome. I don't know about y'all, but my God, he's just that awesome. You don't always have time to even plan it. You're not in control of it. Recognize that. Now unto him that is able. God is not disabled. Matter of fact, if you turn to 2 Peter 3 and 9, it says the Lord is not slack concerning his promise. As some men count slackness, but is long suffering to us word, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. And we know that we know that God is not slack. And we know that Second um, Corinthians one and twenty says. For all the promises of God in him are yea and in him amen unto the glory of God by us. So we know without doubt that God is able because he is not slack. This word slack means to delay. Concerning his promises. And we know this. Because his promises are. Yea and amen. Which is how we know. That he is able to do exceeding. He exceeds my expectations. Every time. Abundantly. Meaning pour out, flowing, send forth, blossom, break forth, out, bud, flourish, make fly, grow. A primitive root to break forth as a bud, bloom, above all that we can, we ask or think. <clears throat> Your mind can't even comprehend it. Excuse me one second. Sorry, y'all, um, but your mind can't even comprehend it. So much so is beyond anything that you personally could ask for or even think to ask according to the power that worketh in us. Okay, so now we got to recognize the power that worketh in us. In us. Let's go to 1 John 4 and 4. It says, Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. 1 Corinthians 2 and 9 says, But it, as it is written, eyes have not seen nor ears heard, neither have entered into the hearts of men the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. I'm going to go back to that. Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you. Than he that is in the world. Who is the he that we're talking about here? That's in you. So I, I speak this scripture often because I really want you to recognize who's in you. Uh, John, St. John 14 and 16. And it says, and I will pray the father and he shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever, even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be 
in you. So now you see what's in you. So greater is he that's in you than he that is in the world. Once again, 1 Corinthians 2 and 9 says, But as it is written, eyes have not seen, nor ears heard, nor ear heard. Neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. But God hath revealed them unto us by his spirit. For the spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the spirit of a man, of man which is in him. Even so, the things of God knoweth no man, but the spirit of God. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. So you have received the spirit of God. It said prior, the spirit of truth. Now we see the spirit of truth is the spirit of God. Thirteen, which things also we speak not in the words which man's wisdom teaches. So here we go. This just coincides. This, as I said, it said not in the words which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Ghost teaches. See, you need the Holy Spirit. Comparing spiritual. Things with spiritual. So now through the spirit you can you can compare spiritual things with spiritual. You can discern where the information that you're receiving is coming from when you have the Holy Spirit. Everything ain't the Holy Spirit. You got they uh, hold on. <laughs> If we go to 2 Timothy 3, and we're going to go on. Now, this is a good scripture just to read, period. But we're just going to go down to 5. And it says, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof from such turn away. Matter of fact, let's go up. Let's go up because let's just go ahead and read three and one. And it says this know also that in the last days perilous times shall come too. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy. Oh my goodness, we have a lot of people that are disobedient. We have um, a lot of proud boasters, lovers of themselves. Yes, yes, yes. Um, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection. There's a lot of people that, that are heartless. Truth breakers. They don't keep their word. False accusers. There's a lot of that going on. Um Incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good. Oh, that's a lot of those. Oh, that would try to make you be something that you're not. Because they see something good in you. They want to spoil your goods. Traitors. It's a lot of that. Heady, high-minded. Lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. Man, that is deep by itself. Having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. Now the word says, from such, turn away. So they're showing a part of godliness, but they're denying the whole power of it. 
they're denying the Holy Spirit a lot of times. It's, it's what they're denying. It's the Holy Spirit. Oh my goodness. You know, it it took a long time for me to recognize even the Holy Spirit because I didn't hear men really talk about the Holy Spirit. The only thing um, you would hear mainly is them talking about the gift of tongues and laying on hands. But relationship with the Holy Spirit all that it just never occurred to me the significance of the Holy Spirit and I know that a lot of times people just don't recognize the Holy Spirit is a gift and anyone is able to receive this gift He says, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. People don't understand gifts, especially gifts of tongues and prophecy and all these things. Um, a lot of things have been spoiled, but because you got to recognize there's some things that come in to mock gifts. It just people mock gifts because... And some for clout, some for recognition, some for all kinds of things. But there is a true power. And the, when you mess up is when you deny the true power. It says, for of this sort are which they which creep into houses and led captive Silly women laden with sins, led away with diverse lusts, ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. A lot of people, they've learned quite a bit, quite a bit, but they yet and still have not learned the knowledge of truth. Okay, so the only way we'll know the way to go, the only way we'll walk into the places, position where God has ordained us to walk into is if we allow the Holy Spirit to lead the way. We just read that it's already been written that I have not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man. It hasn't even entered into our hearts. The things which God hath prepared for them that love him. Some stop there. But if we go on to 12, it says, Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. The only way we can truly know the things that are freely given to us of God is through the Holy Spirit, through the Spirit of God, which is the Holy Spirit, which in this thir 13, which things also we speak not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, which which is exactly where we was at about listening to man over God listening to man over the Holy Spirit but which the Holy Ghost teacheth comparing spiritual things with spiritual a whole lot of the time 
confusion occurs because people base things off of their own thoughts and imaginations, their emotions, their beliefs, and even their common sense. But even 11 says, for what man knoweth the things of a man, save the spirit of man, which is is in him. Even so, the things of God knoweth no man. So that tells you it's a difference. It's a difference. It's a difference between your common sense and what God is saying, how he feel about things. It's, you know, it's, it's a scripture and it talks about how if you even looked on a woman, this is Jesus and what he said. And this is Matthews 5 and 28. It says, but I say unto you that whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after her have committed adultery with her already in his heart no man would think that because men look at things all the time look at people all the time they i've even heard i can't help my eyes yes you can (laughs) you better put them eyeballs in submission if you can't he said the word says to pluck them out okay you you better off with one eye Going into heaven, then then going to hell with both eyes. Okay, so yeah, um, you better get that thing into submission. But it just always triggers me when people say God gave you common sense, common sense, common sense, and you know. If you go to Proverbs 14 and 12, it says that there is a way which seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. This is even how people get confused with the scriptures because they try to to interpret them carnally. But if you go over here to 1 Corinthians 2 and 14, it says, But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. So you have to recognize that you can't always use your common sense, okay? Uh, yeah, when it comes down to going into a dark alley, I would say use your common sense. But at the same time, if the spirit leads you into that dark alley, there's a reason for you to be there. OK, there's a reason for you to go into that. He didn't leave you to do it alone. You're going with him. You know, he's coming with you. So if you got to go through it, then make sure you take him with you. Um. But just know that you can't go based off of your your feelings, your emotions. You can't go off of that. You know, you have to go off of discernment. You have to go off the Holy Spirit. It may seem right. But that don't mean it, it don't lead to death. You know, you may think that, oh, my, well, uh, I think I should go this way, but have you consulted God? Have you consulted? Have you had a conversation and said, Lord God, you choose the way that I should go. You know, a lot of us, we have yet to surrender. And that be a lot of the problem is that we have chosen not to, to totally surrender our will. We just, you know, go by what we desire what we want right now. A lot of times it's right now. I just, I feel my emotions, you know, your emotions.